Hello everybody out there. My name is Jason Norton. I'm the pastor here at Kings Trail Cowboy Church and I'm actually excited to do this little intro to the sermon um, because it's always a, a good thing to get your mind right and to get settled before you hear God's Word. And speaking of God's Word, I have a scripture for you. It's in Matthew chapter 11 verse 28. It says, Come to me all you who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. So when Jesus said, will you come to me and find rest, he also said for you and I to learn from him. So in this sermon section, I pray that you learn the words of Jesus. I pray that you learn the word of God. And um, as you're listening, just remember that this is God's word, and his promise to you is, Faith come by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So enjoy the message. Um, I pray it blesses you, and not just you, but everything in your life. And uh, we'll see you at the end. Love you. Bye-bye. I'm doing all right tonight. Good. Sorry, Brother Jason. I get to preach on the big stage first. <laughs> uh, yeah. Wow. It's like a stage dive right here. I can feel it. Yeah, I know exactly. I've already made a stage dive this week off a ladder. It's not good, but the Lord heals. So, all right, let's go to the Lord right quick. Father, we love you and we thank you and we thank you that we could come into this church and we can sing praises to you. And boy, they were singing praises to you tonight. Man, Lord, you're so good to us and we love you. I pray that you just give me the words that you gave me and, and um, may this message just glorify you. I love you and I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Oh, she is awesome, I tell you. She is the amen giving girl, boy, I tell you. Does anybody? Yeah. Oh, there she is. Yeah, I was looking for my daughter. She's supposed to come sing with me, but... Oh. Yes, Mike. Yeah. All right. Well, last time I preached, y'all preached on the Sunday morning, and we talked about uh, being a servant to one another through the power of the Holy Spirit. So, I was sitting at my desk the other day. This was probably two or three days after that sermon, and the Lord just He said, well, "You know, okay, now we're servant. What What's the next that we need to do? What's what, what's another good attribute that, that I've given you and I expect from you? And I said, I said, well, you want me to be a disciple for you. So that's what this message is about. It's not very long because I guess he knew that uh, it was going to be on the eating night. So, so but, it, but it, was a, it was kind of a, it was awesome because he just poured it into me. And within 10, 15 minutes, I had a couple of sheets worth of stuff and some, some, uh, uh, good points to bring up, and so, uh, of course, I forgot about it until Sunday, because life, you know, takes you away, and uh, you get turned around sometimes, so, um, but, so I want to start off like I usually do with all my sermons, I start with the definition. The definition of a disciple is literally following someone in hopes of eventually becoming what they are or what they stand for. In 1 Corinthians 11, 1, Paul says, be imitators of me as I am in Christ. So a disciple is someone, a disciple for Christ is someone that wants to be more like Christ. Well, I mean, we know how good he is and we know what he does for us, but I said, where do you want me to go with this, Lord? I, was, I, I didn't understand. I'm like, okay, a disciple, I understand. I tried to disciple I try to be a good disciple for you. I try to follow in your footsteps. I fail a lot, but at least I'm, you know, that's my focus. That's my try, you know. And uh, he said, well, 
to know me is to know what I was, what I am. What I was when I was back there, when I was on this earth, and what I am now. And so I went through and started looking through the Bible on what was Jesus. What was his, what was his attributes? If I want to be more like him, I need to know how he was. Kind of that thinking, you know. So um, I started with uh, 10 points. And I tried to find scriptures for all of them, you know, and what, what he is to me, you know, and what, he, what, what I've seen him project. And so um, that's kind of where this message is going to go today. So I, uh, to be more Christ-like, we need to understand what Christ was like. So number one, he was humble. So in John 13, 1 through 5, it shows the picture of Jesus serving his disciples before Passover by washing their feet. I mean, how much, how much more humility being the King of kings, the Lord of lords, to sit down and the people that are following you wash their feet. So he was a humble. He is humble. He was humble then. He's humble now. Amen. Number two, he was holy. And that's a big word. <laughs> it's a big word, and it's a big word to follow. It's a big thing to have to follow. But it says, holy, in 1 Peter 1, 15 through 16, it says, But like the Holy One who called you, become holy yourselves in all of your conduct, for it is written, you shall be holy because I am holy. So holiness is, is, is trying to be more Christ-like. Christ-like is to be holy. So they go together. It's one of his attributes that we have to try to, to follow. What is holiness? I, I, th I think it's opposite of filthiness. It's trying not to be what the world wants us to be and standing out in the crowd a little bit, having that light shine around us, that holiness that's within us, that God, he want, He's in us, He lives in us. So it's a holiness that we need to project out. And I know that when He walked around, as you could see in, in all the stories, He's, he's being followed because of his holiness, because of his greatness. And he calls us to be holy. He was righteous. This is number three. First John 3, 3. And everyone who has this hope focused on him purifies himself just as Jesus is pure. So he's righteous. He's a righteous God. He's a righteous Father. He's, huh? I'm sorry? Oh, I'm sorry. You're writing down. Wow. That's pretty cool. One, uh, first John 3, 3. Uh, yeah, I'm, I know. I told you it's eating night. I'm hungry, guys. God. <laughs> I talk fast. Uh, so, and everyone has this hope focused on him, purifies himself just as Jesus is pure. So righteousness is to be pure, pure in heart, pure in your mind, pure in your spirit about everything that you do. That's what Jesus was like. He was loving. Ephesians 5. One through five, uh, two, one and two. <laughs> Therefore, be imitators of God as dearly loved children and live in love, just as Christ also loved us and gave himself for us, a sacrificial and fragrant offering to God. The ultimate loving. Be loving to everyone. So if we want to be more Christ-like, if we want to be a disciple of Christ, if we want to be a follower and a disciple of him, then we need to be more like him. We need to be more loving. I have a trouble with this sometimes because the world, man, just takes you away sometimes. And I, I, I don't, I'm not, sometimes I get home from work, I'm not loving to my kids, I'm not loving to my wife, I'm not loving to anybody. I just want to go sit down and leave, leave me alone. It's been a day, you know. So it's, these are a lot of things that, I, that I, I know he is that I need to get better at. Number five, Forgiving. Colossians 3.13, bearing, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If someone, ha someone ha happens to have a complaint against anyone else, just as the Lord had forgiven you, so, so you also forgive others. We have to be forgiving. We've got to let stuff go. We need to quit holding things on our shoulders and carrying it around and, and uh, getting upset with it because that's just a way for the devil to put a stronghold on you. I mean, he'll put it, he'll step on it and step right on your back and shove you right in the, your face right in the dirt just because you can't forgive somebody, something of somebody. You know, people don't, 
you know, people say things, they don't mean things. Like I've said in the past, boy, there's many a times, and I know Jason said it from the pulpit, sometimes people just be mean. They're not trying to be mean. It's just that it comes out mean. You gotta, we got to forgive them or we wouldn't do what we were going to do. We're not going to stand up here on the stage and, and talk to a bunch of people if we can't forgive somebody for what might have they might have been thinking about. You know what I'm saying? So we got to be forgiving in everything that we do because Jesus was forgiving. Compassionate. Ephesians 4.32 says, Instead, be kind to one another, compassionate, forgiving one another, just as God in Christ also forgave you. You have to have compassion on people, man. Everybody ain't in your boat. I mean, I wish we were all in the same boat. Sometimes we're not. There's a lot of people going through a lot of things, and it's easy for us to get a little high and mighty. Oh, we're part of a big church, and we go to King's Trail, and everything's good in my family, and look at that poor sucker. You know, and we get this high and mighty. We're not compassionate for, any, for people. I've seen myself do it. I might strike me, you know, slap me down. Lord has. He's like, man, what's, what are you thinking? Be compassionate. Love on them. You know, it's, it's easy to, 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 to put yourself on a high horse. I mean, especially if everything's rolling good in your life. But I tell you, sometimes it's uh, uh, that compassion goes away and you forget about all the, the heartache that people go through. And like I said, we ain't all in the same boat sometimes. So compassionate. Jesus was compassionate. Submissive. Uh, 1 Peter 2, 21. For to this you were called, since Christ also suffered for you, leaving an example for all to follow in his steps. He was submissive. He took, he took upon that cross. He, he lowered himself, carried that cross up the hill and died for us. He was submissive. Number eight. Obedient. Philippians 2, 5 through 8. You should have the same attitude towards one another that Christ Jesus had, who, though he existed in the form of God, did not regard equally with God as sometime, something to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking on the form of a slave. By, look, by looking like other men... And by sharing human nature, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the death, even death on the cross. So he was a God. He didn't have to come to this earth. But he was obedient. He came to this earth and he lived 33 years and was, there's never been an execution worse than what Jesus went through. From this day, from, from that day since, never been an execution that was any worse. He took on not just the physical abuse that he took. He took on all of our sins. Everything that you feel, he felt. Every dirty thing you've ever done, he took it upon his back. Everything. For everybody. I can't even imagine. I can't even imagine. We think, yes, he died for our sins. He died for all of our sins. Every filthy thing you can think of. And he was obedient doing it. Number nine, king, uh, kind. Luke six thirty five, But love your enemies and do good and lend, expecting nothing back. Then your reward will be great, and you will be the sons of the Most High, because he is kind to ungrateful, and to evil people. Are we that? <laughs> Tell you what, that's, probably, that's a hard thing for me sometimes. It's hard to be kind to somebody that's spitting in your face. But Jesus was kind. He loved the people that were spitting on him. He loved the guy that was slapping him with him whip. He loved the guy that was nailing his hands through the, onto the cross. He loved him. Number 10, generous in giving. 2 Corinthians 8 and 9, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
that although he was rich, he became poor for your sakes, so that you, by his poverty, could become rich. He was generous in giving. He still is. It's quick. It's in a big sermon. But there's ten attributes of Christ that, as Jason said, this is going to go up on my mirror. And I'm going to read it every day. Because as much as I try to be kind, and I, I, I mean, I think it, there's not even many people who will say that I'm just a horrible person, but there's days when I feel like I'm horrible. You know, and there's days that I need that reminder is I'm, I'm a disciple for him, and I need to do what I need to do to make sure that, that I'm portraying that in all that I do. It doesn't turn off at work. It doesn't turn off when you're at Walmart. It doesn't turn off when you're pumping gas at the gas station. It doesn't, it doesn't turn off when, the, when you don't got a dime in your pocket. I mean, I can't even think of any, anything, uh, any other despair stories. It doesn't turn off. God's always with us. Jesus is always with us. And he wants us to disciple in all that we're going through. If you're in, a, if you're in bad health, Man, I've seen people, I've been to the hospital and been more touched by people that were on their deathbed praising and ready to go home than, than you know, the, the parents that are sitting out or the family that's sitting out, woe is me, I'm about to lose him. Because they had this spirit, they knew what Jesus was like, and they were still being disciples, even in their last minute. I want to be that guy. No matter what the world dumps on me, no matter what goes on, I want to be that. I want to be what Jesus was. I want it to portray through what I do. So I want to just strive to be like Jesus. I always fall short, and I know I will, but I'm going to try every day. So, in this message, I strive that you do the same. Try to be humble, holy, righteous, loving, forgiving, compassionate, submissive, obedient, kind, and a generous person to everybody that you see. And be that disciple that Christ wants you to be. Let's pray for the food. Dear Father, we love you and we thank you for being who you are. We thank you that you came onto this earth and you gave us a perfect example. I pray that everyone in this room strives to be more like you in all that they do. Because the way this world's going, it ain't going to get no better. It's only going to get better through us. And us striving to be more like you and being your disciples and sharing the word with people and not being afraid what other people say. Just doing it. Being bold and strong for you, Lord. I pray that boldness upon everyone in this room. I pray your blessings upon this food. I pray your blessings upon these people. I pray your blessings upon this fellowship, Lord. We love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks, guys. Sweet. Hello, everybody, again. Uh, you just finished listening to the sermon today. And uh, I have another scripture. Imagine that. Uh, lots of God's Word being poured into you today or tonight or however what time um, this message is reaching you but in Mark chapter 4 verse 15 it talks about the parable of the sower and the seed God's seed is God's word and listen to this real quick it says and these are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown when they hear Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in your hearts so since God's word has been sown in your heart during that message it is our prayer that God solidifies that seed and protects it and watches over it and may it be watered. And just as God's word says, may he give the increase. And I pray he gives the increase of salvation in your life. And I need you to hear this real quick. I need you to pause what you're doing. I need you to listen. And I pray these words sink deep down into your soul. The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. So if you do, you do believe that to be true, then I pray that you, that you say this prayer. 
And you know what? You don't want to say it if you don't mean it, but, don't, but if you do believe it and you do mean it, then you need to confess it, you know? When, gospel, when the gospel of Jesus Christ is preached, it fills up your heart and uh, you desire to be saved. So you just say a simple prayer like this. You say, Lord Jesus, I ask that you forgive me of all my sins. I ask that you come into my life and be the boss of my life. Today I confess you as Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. Be Lord of my life. And if you did that, your salvation is um, totally and completely secured. And I would encourage you to go tell somebody that you got saved today or tonight or whenever you heard this message. And I pray we see you again back at the sermon section. I pray you come and visit us in person if, uh, um, if you're around this local area. But either way, may God bless you and we love you all in Jesus' name. Bye-bye.